Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another screencast by your earth science teacher Mr. Stano. The last time we left off we were talking about climatic factors uh, or factors that affect our climate. In this screencast we're going to look at El Nino and La Nina as uh, two occurring events or phenomena that affect the Pacific Ocean and ultimately affect global oceanic and uh, wind patterns. So as you can see here we have these two diagrams showing our sea surface temperatures as our United States right here. And you can see in a La Nina, con La Nina condition, these are usually cold currents in the Pacific Ocean. The area we're really concerned with is right around here, right around the equator. And you can see by the darker blues and purples that those are colder ocean temperatures off the west coast of South America. During an El Nino condition, the exact opposite, we can see these warm sea surface temperatures right off the west coast of South America. You can see there is a little correlation. You can see that the water patterns do change in the different areas of the globe, just like over here and here. So these two conditions lead to different or unusual ocean currents within the Pacific Ocean. This diagram right here shows a typical um, typical circulation patterns of our ocean and atmosphere over in the Pacific Ocean uh, during a typical year or normal year. On this, what we have is our ocean patterns move from east to west, bringing water across the equator towards the Pacific, towards Australia. Our, ocean, our global wind patterns follow that same pattern. They'll move from east to west, moving towards Australia. Now as this air moves over and follows the water, it's going to pick up some of that energy from the ocean. So you can see here, so water evaporates. As this water evaporates, the winds are going to carry it over, and you'll notice a low pressure system develops over Australia. So they'll receive more rains than, uh, they'll receive more rain. And over here in Peru, or on the eastern side of the Pacific Ocean, we'll have our high pressure over here, and when we have high pressure, we have clear or good weather. Also to note, this right here, this thermocline. The thermocline is basically a sharp change in water temperature. But importantly, this right here, you can see that as the Pacific Ocean, this current comes up, we have what's known as upwelling near Peru which is a good thing. Upwelling brings nutrients and materials down from the bottom of the ocean up towards the surface where then algae have nutrients to feed on and then the algae help support higher trophic levels or they support organisms in the food web. Here's another look at the normal conditions where the normal convection cells or uh, global Pacific Ocean currents and Pacific uh, air currents above them. So here's our thermocline here. So the water, this is a sharp change in temperature. We have upwelling over here on the east. And what happens is then this water is gonna travel across, heat up as it moves along the equator, and then sink back down. On As far as the, ocean, uh, the atmospheric pattern, same thing, it moves across the equator, low pressure develops over Australia, and we have our high pressure over South America. This diagram right here is something you definitely want to get down and also label it as normal. During our El Nino conditions, we can see there's a reversal in our, our wind patterns or our convection cell over the Pacific Ocean. In this scenario, what you can see is that this water is no longer really pushing across. Those currents kind of stopped or shift. What ends up happening during the El Nino condition is that our low pressure now shifts. Notice that it was over here in Australia and it's moved towards the middle of the ocean and closer to the, eastern, uh, to the western side of South America. So now our low pressure is over here and we get more rains on this region. Here, high pressure, it remains relatively dry, which isn't very good. 
Australia because of its tropical climate or being very warm, when it has lots of rains, we have lots of growth of uh, vegetation. Now all of a sudden it becomes extremely dry. This vegetation can't grow, it dies out and poses risks for wildfires. Over here in this South America where this low pressure is, our thermocline is not as sharp as it was before and we have no upwelling. When we have no upwelling, we can't bring nutrients to the surface and if there's no nutrients to the surface, that means algae won't be able to get supported. And in turn, organisms in the food web won't have anything to eat. So the conditions for fishing and the fishing industry at this time are no good. So El Nino is really, it, it wreaks havoc with both systems um, across the Pacific Ocean. Here's another diagram for a fully developed El Nino. This is a, definitely a really good diagram. I would copy this one. And what you end up seeing is our global wind patterns moving now across the ocean in the opposite direction, following that easterly movement. Low pressure, now over Peru where we have our rains, high pressure over Indonesia, Australia. The ocean patterns are going to do the same thing. They're going to follow across. Now when the water gets pushed across, we get this warm water, but also water begins to pile up near the Peru side or towards the west coast of South America. No upwelling means that no nutrients can get up from the surface. Really good drawing. Definitely get this one for the El Nino condition of our walker circulation. The walker circulation is what we call this convection cell over the Pacific Ocean. So once again, you can see our normal conditions, how they have changed. Remember, the low, for normal conditions, low pressure is always over Australia. Now we can have the exact opposite of El Nino, which is La Nina conditions. La Nina conditions are like a heightened or more extreme normal conditions. So what do I mean by that? If you take a look at this diagram and the one right before it, you can see that our low pressure system is still near or over Australia. During La Nina, notice how it shifts a little bit more. La Nina, the walker circulation is even stronger, pushing that low pressure even further towards the west. Notice the thermoclines a lot more sharply. So in this, our upwelling will also be more sharp, so more nutrients can make it towards the surface. La Nina is not such a bad thing for the Pacific Ocean. Uh, this diagram is pretty good, and uh, you could probably copy this one down too, but uh, we should have another good one coming up. So here's some consequences of El Nino and La Nina. Uh, specifically, this is dealing with El Nino, and some of which I've already mentioned, where we have the upwelling is almost non-existent off the west coast of South America, and which ends up leading to collapse of the food chains. That's really about it for El Nino and La Nina and for climatic factors. I hope you enjoyed the screencast. If you have any questions, you know where to look. Thanks again, have a good night, goodbye.